Welcome to the Business of Being Healthy, where we are passionate about treating our health as good as we treat our wealth. Shelly Bryan here, and I am obsessed with sharing real life experiences and wisdom to help save you time, heartache, and money as you continue to grow personally and professionally. Twice a week, we push aside that BS to take massive intentional action. And I promise by tuning in, you will receive the straightforward talk you've been waiting for filled with actionable steps that will inspire you to achieve the health and wealth you desire while you are building your empire. Imagine you recently started a new job, got engaged to the love of your life, and bought your first home. Just when you think you have it all together, you wake up in the morning not being able to see from your left eye. How's that for today's introduction to the Business of Being Healthy podcast? My name is Shelly Bryan, and I am your host, and that story is me. I shared it a little bit on the intro uh, episode that I left first, but I want to dive into it a little bit more today because there's so much more behind this story. And as I shared before, this podcast ties together both health and business. And health, in no way am I talking about the next fad diet or next crazy exercise program that is the one. This is health in all areas. And today, we're going to talk about stress. So have you ever had any stress? We just got done with the holidays and it's the new year. If you're not raising your head or nodding, I I don't even know what to do with you because that is one of the most stressful periods of life. That being said, coming into the new year can cause all kinds of stress. And if stress is left unrecognized or unmanaged, it will make you pay attention, most likely at the most inconvenient time, and it can leave lasting impacts on your health, like me. Now, I didn't recognize the signs that stress was really overpowering my body, and it left me blind. And this traumatic experience that occurred over 15 years ago left me with a clear, let me tell you, clear understanding about leveraging your health to perform stronger in all areas of life, right? This isn't only just about your physical Look, this is about leveraging your health, managing your stress so that you can perform in optimum areas. Like, have you ever had so much stress that it affected your body? Like me, I lost the eyesight in my left eye. But I actually, let me share a couple other stories with you. I just worked out with a a physical fitness trainer in California that had such high levels of stress and her cortisol levels were so high that her body became allergic to the sun. Another colleague had developed a throat issue because she was so focused on a portion of business. And she realized that once she let it go, she was became healed. There was nothing else that was going to heal it. Most recently, my pastor had a stroke at the age of 46. 46, you guys. Now, all of these people that I just listed, including myself, I was only 24 when this happened to me. And all of them were quote unquote healthy. The one thing that everyone had in common is that they had huge ambitions to contribute to the world, mostly through their businesses. And here's the thing is that stress is one of those things that, especially um, women, we just say we're fine, right? We just say we're fine. We're good. This is normal. This is my new normal. This is what it is. And stress isn't always like obvious. It's not just like, oh, high blood pressure or heart issues. It can have more effects on your health than you may realize. And these health effects related to stress can transition over to other areas of your life, like your career, your family. And really long-term activation of stress or chronic stress is an overexposure to cortisol and other hormones And it can disrupt almost all of your body's processes. Now, this isn't something that a lot of people talk about. We're always focused on like the physical look of our body. But here's the key is that stress can show up both physically and not. 
you could really be damaging your inside, but also stress can have all kinds of different uh, health problems, you know, like anxiety, depression, digestive, who's had like an upset stomach when they get stressed out, headaches, common, very common, muscle tension, pain, heart disease, heart attack, high blood pressure, strokes, sleeping problems, weight gain, memory and concentration impairment. Now, one of the ones that I talk with a lot of my clients about is also inflammation. When you are in a constant state of stress, right? And everybody has a different level of stress. That's one thing that um, I believe society has really done a poor job on. You know, oh, you should be stressed if you're killing it or hustling or, you know, really pushing hard in your career, then you should like stress is normal. That's what you should have. That's not true. Sure, you can have stress and we all do at some level, but that doesn't mean that we leave it unrecognized or unmanaged. We got to make sure that we are doing the things that we can to keep our health at the optimum level. Otherwise, trust me, like I shared, it's going to show up whether you like it or not. Now, one of the mentors, he doesn't even know he's my mentor, but I've seen him speak live. I listen to his podcast is Ed Milet. Uh, if you don't follow him, I highly recommend it. Um, is that he always says, this happened for me, not to me. And I can, you know, when this first happened, did I have that outlook? No. Looking back now through a lot of work I've done, a lot of training on my mindset, I can clearly see that this happened for me. And I am on a mission to not let this happen to any other women. Because what happened the way I lost my eyesight, a virus attacked my optic nerve. And this is a virus that if you're in your late 30s, 40s plus, you've got the virus too. Your body is just keeping it at bay. But if you don't take care of your body, it's not able to do that. And that's what happened to me. Now, when it happened, I had a choice to make. It was victim or victor. Now, it wasn't an easy choice. And at the time when this happened, I was climbing the corporate ladder and I was competing on my horses nationally. So I had no time to stop, but my body told me different. And for once, I had no other option to listen. Now, I've done a lot of research on this. And interestingly enough, um, I was in the medical industry at the time, which gave me all kinds of different training and opportunities. But some of the research that I found that the American Psycho uh, Psychological Association says the long-term activ activation of stress response system and the overexposure to cortisol and other stress hormones that come with it can disrupt almost all of your body's processes. Now, let's think about that for a minute. If you're already in a state of stress, but maybe you have some other health issues, other comorbidities, like hormone imbalances, right? Hello, women in our 40s, we always have that. Um, maybe you have some excess weight gain or high blood pressure. If you have something else and then you're also living in a constant state of stress, you are in fact putting your body at risk. And this, like I said, isn't something that we talk about, but it can have incredible effects if you begin to learn how to manage your stress. Now, like I shared, I was in the health industry at the time. And one of the things that this experience taught me was how important it was to have like a medical team. So I had a medical team from the Mayo Clinic to uh, naturopathic doctors to dermatologists that knew ophthalmologists that knew retina specialists. I started partnering with everybody together. That is actually one of my superpowers that I've always had is being able to find the solution and find the right people to get me to that solution. That's something that you can always do for your health is that you have to be your biggest advocate. Now, here's the funny thing about medicine. Let me tell you, remember this. It is a, the study of medicine, not the exact play-by-play -play black and white medicine. So that's something when it comes to stress and your health, you always need to take into consideration. If you don't like your first opinion that you get with a doctor, I encourage you, 
go get a second opinion or a third opinion. Talk to different doctors as they all can start referring to everybody. Remember, just because they have an MD or a DO or an NMD behind their name does not mean that their answer is the only answer. They are working with the knowledge that they have. And sometimes there are different people that have different experiences. Similar to business, right? If you are going to go hire somebody to help you in digital marketing, are you only going to go work with someone that does print? No, they can maybe help you a little bit, but you're also going to go over and find the best digital marketer and you're going to try them out. And if they don't produce results, you're going to reevaluate and go back and say, you know what? I think we need to find someone different. That is the same methodology that you should use with your health and the health of all of your loved ones. I can't say it enough that you got to be your biggest advocate. I know you're doing this in your business, but you also have to do it with your health. Another lesson that I was able to take from this experience is raising my hand. Come on, how many of you guys also have a hard time raising your hand? I know high achievers out there that are always looking to up their game. Sometimes it's so hard for us to raise our hand and ask for help. Yet, I can tell you from experience that it is one of the best things that I have learned how to do now into my 40s. Oftentimes, we create teams and advocates for our business. But how often are you an advocate for your health? I already talked about this once, but it's worth mentioning again. We cannot depend on other people to run our bodies. We don't depend on other people to run our business. Sure, they're going to help us, but we are the ones that are the leader and the visionary and the one that is going to be directing that they are going to be looking to. That is the same thing that we need to use when it comes to our health is that in all of my professional experience, whether it was climbing the corporate ladder, running restaurants, running business, running online businesses, what I found is actually the healthier I became and the better I felt, the better I performed in every single area, whether it was being, you know, a more present and patient mom at home, a wife with more patience, come on, who doesn't need more of that? And or trying to kill it in my job, right? Or my business. And I mean, kill it, like win. We are doing this to perform at high levels. And in no way should you have to sacrifice your health for your performance or your win at work. It should be a both, not either or. And that's part of the reason why I created this podcast is that no longer you have to live like in the either or lifestyle. You can have both and still come home at night to your loved ones with plenty of patience. Like I shared, I'm going to be dropping episodes twice a week. And this one was one of the first ones I wanted to start off with because it's obviously hits a pretty sensitive spot with me. I don't want anyone to go blind like me, although I wouldn't love having like another one-eyed twin. But my goal is that you guys can learn from my mistakes and then I can also give you tips and tools on how to navigate it. And so before I sign off today, I want to leave you with three tips to get started with managing your stress. And I gotta tell you, the fact that you're using your most valuable asset right now, time to listen to this podcast tells me that you are deserving of better health while you're running your business and excelling in your career. You know, there is a life full of energy and abundance waiting for you and you're ready to let go of running on fumes and sacrificing yourself for others or your business. So let's dive in. Now, the first one I want to leave you today is focus your attention on how you want to feel in certain situations. I know as high achievers, if you're like me, we love that feeling of crossing off our to-do list. But if it leaves you feeling depleted at the end of the day, then really what's the point? Are you in a fight mode or a flight mode? How do you want to feel walking into a meeting? And how do you want to feel when you get home at night to see your family? Or how do you want to feel at home at night when you walk in and see your family? Is the intention to be drained with little patience or to have excitement and joy wanting to hear all about their day? When you focus on the feelings that you want to have, 
it sets better intentions for how you can perform in that situation. Number two, be open to listening if your body is telling you something, right? How many times are you reaching for another snack because you're starving? Or are you having to get up? Or are you feeling lethargic at your desk? The longer the stress lasts, the worse it is both for your mind or body. So if you are feeling fatigued, if you're unable to concentrate for it on a task for longer than 25 minutes, or you're irritable, literally for no good reason, your body is telling you something and it's time for you to recognize it. For me, one of my indicators was inflammation or swelling. When I started to notice that my fingers would swell, it was a cortisol drop that then caused me to retain water. I had to recognize that to then realize some of the tools that I can use to be able to not only manage the stress, but then help my body respond and recuperate after. Now, number three is eat. Remember the pa- my pastor I shared about earlier who had the stroke just a few months ago at 46 years old? He is an absolute miracle. And he got back on stage a couple weeks ago and shared part of his story. We'd heard bits and pieces. One of the things he shared and was almost joking about was his sugary coffees. Who can relate to that one? Maybe that 3 p.m., Starbucks that costs you $25 that's full of sugar that maybe gets you through the next couple hours. Well, I'm here to tell you, sorry to break it to you, but coffee is not a food group. Your body needs proper fuel in the form of food, nutritious food to perform at high levels. Now, am I saying like you should just eat all day? No, there's a lot of strategy that goes behind having proper nutrition to be able to perform at optimum levels. It's not hard. It's strategy, similar to what you would use in your business. You're not going to use a Christmas strategy during your Easter strategy. There are two totally different timeframes and require different methodologies on how to perform well. Your body is the same thing and performs the same way when you fuel it properly. Now, my hope is that you found value in today's episode and that you'll share it with someone that you know that maybe kind of tries to go on the diet of coffee or someone that you know has been under a lot of stress, let's help them become aware of what stress can do when it's left unrecognized or unmanaged. So please share this with a friend. Also, I would absolutely love and appreciate if you drop me a five-star review. I'm launching this out. I can't wait to get it out to the masses and your help would mean the world to me. So thrilled you joined me on today's episode of the Business of Being Healthy and can't wait to see you next time.